Oh, now I'm going to turn that round to you as one of the examiner questions. I go, what is below shift? So we're back in the hangar again, and uh, we've, we've done pretty much a DI on the wing itself, and Mark's going to uh, quiz me <laughs> on uh, different aspects of the wing. I can probably guarantee I won't know a lot of it, but that's the whole point of the video, is to, come, to get across uh, what different parts of the wing are, what they're called, uh, and, and why they're there, and how the wing actually operates. It's going to be completely different to a fixed wing aircraft, because they're designed as a flex wing. So, Mark, <laughs> okay. teach me about flex wing wings. So, the second part of your ground oral, um, obviously, is going to be talking about the principles of flight and how it works. Now, in a flex wing, the major I won't say all of it, the majority of that is going to be on how the flex wing actually works in itself. So, you're right, we're going to look at, first of all, the component parts, uh, and then we're going to be looking into what do those component parts do, uh, and should we find any faults, is that bad, you know, or, or are we okay, um, and how do they work with each other in order to achieve controlled flight. Um, again, it all comes back to uh, principles of flight, the bit that everybody skirts over in the uh, Cosgrove, principles of flight, okay, well that's boring. Well actually, understanding your aircraft really will aid your, not only your flight training, but certainly understanding what's going on with your aircraft, say when it's thermic or when it's quite bouncy or how you're going to achieve a better landing technique. So this section we're going to really just sort of ask you some questions just to get your general sort of understanding. So we'll start off easy. <laughs> What's the, where's, the, where's the leading edge on, on, a, uh, on a flex wing microlight? That leading part of the wing. That's right. it's, it's there. It leads. <laughs> yeah, so therefore, we there, if we have a leading edge, we must also have a trailing edge, trailing edge again. There we go. The back portion of the aircraft. Now, the reason why these are called flex wings isn't because we can fold them up and put them into a little bag and take them home with us. It's because during flight, they flex and they change shape depending on how we're moving the pod around, particularly how we're moving the weight around. And with the use of voodoo, uh, the aircraft is therefore able to roll or, or, make, or change pitch. Let's look at the weight shift, see, your, see where your understanding of, of the weight shift is. Let's just first of all detach this wing. By pushing the bar forwards and backwards, we ch are able to change the attitude or pitch of the aircraft. So how does that happen, more importantly? So we want the aircraft to be of a nose down attitude or pay change it to a pitch down attitude. What's the correct procedure on that, first of all? Attitude, reduce the power. Yeah. Uh, and but by attitude it's pulling the bar in so we pull the bar in yeah. how does that affect the aircraft well it's moving the weight further forward yep of, of the wing which makes it effectively more nose heavy that's exactly it you're making the nose more heavy and same when we are pushing the bar forward we are pushing the center of gravity aft therefore the weight of the aircraft it acts like a pendulum if, if my hand here is the wing What's happening is as we pull the bar back, we're allowing the nose to come. Actually, let's do this in the right way there. So this is the leading edge. This is the trailing edge. There's the weight. By moving the center of gravity forward, the wing wants to do this. By moving the center of gravity backwards, the wing wants to do this. And so that's how we alter the pitch. It's moving that weight around in order to achieve. The beauty with these aircraft is they have inbuilt stability. So in pitch, are we positive, positively stable, neutrally stable, or negatively stable? It's positive because of reflex. <laughs> uh, not just of reflex, but yeah, reflex is a huge portion of the positive stability. Most aircraft, if not all aircraft, are positively stable in pitch. So let's have a more on the aerofoil side of things. Yes, we reduce the angle of attack and we start to descend, but what happens as we reduce 
that angle of attack, what's, what are we going to start increasing? The speed. Airspeed. Okay, so airspeed over an aerofoil generates what? More lift. More lift. So we start combating the aircraft here. So yes, we are starting to descend, but we start to generate airflow over the wing, which generates more lift, which starts to bring the nose back up again. Flex wings have a secondary, which you've already mentioned, um, which is called the reflex. And what I want to just lower this wing and let's have a look at that reflex portion. So the reflex portion of the wing pretty much is from here all the way into the root of the wing, which is here. And it's controlled predominantly by these. What are they called? Luff lines. Luff lines, that's right. And if you see on these luff lines here, we have a web system that's at the back there. Can you see these? What's that connected to? Uh, I'm, that's going to be connected to the trimmer. That's right, OK. If we wanted to fly this aircraft slower, which way would the trimmer, would it pull on those? luff lines or slacken those luff lines it's off. It's going to pull on them because you want to increase the amount of reflex to lift the nose up. That's exactly it. So if you watch this luff line, the luff lines there, what I'm going to do is put this trimmer into fully fast trim. You can see it's reduced the reflex to fly slowly, albeit a slower hands off trim. I'm pulling those luff lines in, which is pulling the reflex portion of the wing in. And what it's doing is it's creating, it's disturbing the airflow. So here we have the camber um, of the flex wing and the luff lines are creating the reflex in the wing. So you have one portion here which is generating lift and this portion here which is generating a pitch. drag. Yeah. So as we are pulling the nose down, this is more into the airflow and therefore wanting to bring the nose back up again. So that's how the reflex is working. It's balancing that out. So if we are flying, want to fly at a faster hands off trim, we reduce that reflex and therefore the nose up tendency is reduced. Make sense? Yes. <laughs> OK. What would happen if one of those um, trimmer cables um, there snapped? Well, it looks like through the pulleys, it's going to affect the other side of it. So if you lose one wire, it's going to affect the same point on the other side. Yeah. So you get equal loss. That's right. Um, so you're going to lose pitch stability. Um, and you're going to lose the effect it was having. So if, it's, if it's holding that trim, it's basically going to make it fly faster. It, it would lose fly faster. For, yeah, a, for a set trim position. Yeah. Uh, and that would certainly affect... How would you notice that most of all in flight? Because it would be in you're flight. You're going to notice it in the hands-off trim position. Yes. Um, so say you, it's gone and you're now, it's, you've, you're aware that there's a problem mm. what, and you were coming into land, what would you expect or what would you try to achieve? Would you try to fly faster, slower, same speed? It's only going to affect the hands-off trim position, isn't it? Yeah. So wherever I want to fly it is, is the pitch position, yeah. but it's where it would naturally want to sit. <laughs> so I wouldn't notice anything until I went hands-off. That's right. The, the issue that you get with a lot of these is it, um, a lot of people think that it should be where it is. Even on a GT50 when you can trim these out electrically to from 40 to 80, actually you can fly at any speed. The trimmer is only there to relieve bar pressure. It's not um, a, a, a flying surface as it were. It's not a, 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 a rudder or, or an aileron. It's purely there to relieve bar pressure. So you can fly at any speed that you want, but you're going to feel that. So where you would probably be used to more fingertip pressure on a Quantum, yeah. the aircraft wants to be at a, hands, a, a higher hands-off trim. So you might find that you'll be pushing the bar forward in order to maintain the airspeed because yeah. the aircraft will feel heavier. Which are the landing wires? Uh, the landing wires are the ones on top because they support the weight of the wing when it's not flying. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And what are they doing in flight? In flight, uh, not a lot. Actually, yeah, they're, they're actually quite baggy. So, I mean, I find this hilarious. What if when we're talking to me, we do scare people, scare, not scare people, we do, I'm afraid of flying flights. Mm. Um, and one of the most common things is, what if the wing falls off? And I have to say, the wing won't fall off, it'll fall up. <laughs> but when it comes off it's not going to just fall off yeah. it's producing lift and just like a flex wing when we're in the air this is my seagull moments yeah. the wings generate lift and the weight's still pulling down so the wings go up this way so all the landing wires aren't under tension um 
So therefore, which wires are under tension during flight? These side wires. That's it, side wires and nose and tail nose wires. And tail, yeah. Okay, so the load, therefore, of these wings is going through where? The load is going through the actual um, A-frame. A-frame, that's exactly it. So we have a number of tubes that are here of the A-frame. We have the uprights and the base bar. What load is this um, down tube going through? It's going through compression. That's exactly it. And what's this going through? It's going through tension because it's been pulled out. Yes, so this is being pulled that way and this is being pushed in that way. So which, uh, which if you were to choose to have a bend, I've been asked this question myself in many, many uh, uh, revalidations, but if you were to choose to have a bend in, one of these tubes, which one would it be? I'm going to apply a bit of engineering knowledge. I'd rather have it in this because it's going to be pulling it out. Yeah, it. Is there not a safety cable inside this nope. as well? There isn't. No, not at all. Because there is in my PB. Is there? What a great design. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing at all on these. It's all working through on that load. And it, you can see it's pulled through the nose and uh, through the tail and from the wing wires as well. Any, any damage to these tubes, sw sw swap them out. You do not want to have any damage on these tubes. This is what makes a flex wing clap hands above you. Um, so yes, that's where all the load's going through there. And so it's very important when we're checking, particularly things like wires, and I've just demonstrated to you earlier why we do certain things, that actually these are some of the best wires. And you see some are plastic coated and some are open. If I run my fingers through these wires and get a pinprick, mm. it's gonna hurt but not as much as when these wings clap hands above you and you wish that you check them. So what kind of damage is acceptable if you saw one wire that was snapped? Uh, I brain. really honestly don't know what the limitations are or what the acceptable limits, but I would, if I was being me, as overly cautious Giles, I would say swap it out. Yeah. If I won't change it. No damage. Yeah, you're not allowed zero damage. zero damage. And one of the bits that you want to look at particularly is down in these junctions here. Now these are ones I haven't cleaned up, so it's useful for me to show you whilst they're here. See how these are green? Mm -hmm. Just a bit of corrosion on there. A bit of AC50 will clean it up. These are the ones that bite, that's where they're after there. Uh, these I do have a, a, a shelf life now, um, certainly on, well, not so much on quantums, but again, you want to make sure what the lifed parts on those are. So let's have a look at the nose wires whilst we're talking about nose wires. <coughs> so this is the swan catch or over center catch. Where's the load going through on here? Um. Well, it's going through that pivot point there, directly, um, actually there, because that's the swan net going through there, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it is a shared load, but predominantly. See, this is, we see so many that that's there. <gasps> Crikey. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not going to pull straight out, and certainly under load, but... Because yeah, it's in shear, isn't it, as opposed to... Yeah. That's your swan catch. Hooks over. So it is actually a shared load between three yeah. pins then. And goes through. Once that's through, that goes over. It's worth inspecting these portions. Yeah. What damage, or how are you likely to damage this particular bracket there? Rigging it. Rigging, yeah. So whenever you've de-rigged or rigged your wing, you really want to get eyes on that. This nose, ca this nose uh, cover comes off anyway. But certainly when you are doing your rigging um, checks, this particularly is one that you want to ha ha uh, have a look at. So during your test, you're probably going to be asked things that are relevant to on type. So one of the things they're likely to ask you is things like the service maintenance um, on your aircraft. One of the common ones that doesn't happen a lot is things like baton profiling. So they may ask you on how often should your baton profile uh, be done. Now that's a POH question yeah. uh, and relevant to the aircraft that you are, uh, particularly on, on a Quantum uh, and most GT machines, it's 50 hours. How often do you think it can get done by the owner? When it gets derigged? Never is the answer. <laughs> there, are, <laughs> there are so many. And don't forget, if it's not in the logbook, it hasn't happened. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, always make sure whatever maintenance or servicing that you do to your aircraft goes into a logbook. Uh, but yeah, the band profile is really, really important. One of the aircrafts, uh, particularly on a flex wing, is the underside battens. Now I have done a batten profile on this and it's only done one flight. These should be perfectly straight. So when you take these out, you can see if there is any damage. It's not as straight as it could be. How would you go about straightening these or tweaking your buttons? Uh, gently over your thigh. Yeah, that, that is exactly it. You know, to, you look down the button, see where it is, work its way around there. There's a small bend, find out where it is. And I fortunately have quite perfectly aerofoil shaped thighs. So just a gentle light pressure, a little bit at a time. Back, check. It's easier to get it right than try and force it and get it wrong. And there you go, a little bit of a... Uh... But your lower battens will give you a great indicator <coughs> um, on what your upper battens are like. Because these, these in flight, you'll see there's a tube that's here. You'll see the shadow that runs through there where these lower buttons get forced over and so the bend that's in the lower buttons is always where it's being forced over the floating cross tube so staying within the batten realm what purpose do the bungees have provide tension to the batten in the wing they do and so how can we affect the tension shorten the bungee changing the tension on the bungee now you can use this to help shape the air um, the way that the aircraft flies so by having tighter bungees on the root or the reflex portion will change on how that aircraft flies by changing the bungees in the billow shift area uh, will change on how the aircraft rolls so there's varying ways that you can tweak that personally i double bungee um, uh, most of the battens and 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 just to make it a really nice stable sort of dormant aircraft but if you are throwing it around or you want real stable aircraft you can change that if you change the bungees make sure it's you that do all the knots don't you do one side and your friend does the other because they need to be under equal tension and he might the other person might be putting on a lot of tension you might be slack so the, so the bungee tension on the um button can drastically affect the trim yeah, of the wing. So, You've used that term twice, billow shift. Yeah. What is billow shift? Oh, now I'm going to turn that round to you as one of the examiner questions. I go, what is billow shift? I would say it's the amount of billow, I'm looking from a sail term, that it allows the wing to flex. If it's too tight, yeah. you're not going to have much roll control. If it's too slack, you're going to have a very easy amount of roll control. Okay, close, that's my close enough. Yeah, more when they're going to ask you this question, it's understanding that it's to do with roll, uh, uh, particularly, or roll if you're not from Stoke. Um, and the easiest way to think of these is they are like ailerons. They couldn't be any more like ailerons, to be honest. That's exactly what, what happens. If you imagine looking on, you're the tail, I'm the nose. These are the ailerons. When you roll, the ailerons do this. Yeah. One's producing more lift, so it goes up, and the other one's producing uh, less lift, so it goes down. So the billow shift, as you're moving the weight from one side to another, the weight pulls in, tightening one side of the wing. So that wing goes up. It's creating more lift because it's a better More airflow, lift, section. yes. This side, now being billowed, generates more drag, which brings in the yaw. Does it also produce less lift because it's billowed? It, well, it will do, yes. And obviously going yeah. up is effectively acting a bit like an aileron? Exactly, but you're not getting the adverse yaw that you might get, say, in a fixed wing. Right. The reason being is it's a delta wing. So as you're now rolling, you are slipping, mm. you're changing the relative airflow. Instead of we're now traveling this way, we roll, the air is traveling over, the relative airflow is traveling over. Self-correcting. Yes, so the aircraft, again, self-induced on the yaw side of things. So the reason why a flex wing can't fly along in the sky like this is a combination of the billow shift, the delta wing, and all of the vertical surfaces after of the center of gravity, bringing in the secondary effect of yaw. Right. So a question that I love to throw out to a lot of uh, uh, flex wing guys, whether they're students or qualified pilots, what's washout? Washout? And I can answer this one because <laughs> I've, I used to build washout into my model aircraft wings. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, washout is the reduction of angle of attack on the outer portion of a wing to delay the onset of stall. So the inner part of the wing stalls before the outer part of the wing stall. Uh, yes, that, that's all, that, that is it. Um, it the washout in its most layman terms describes the difference from angle of attack from the root to the tip. Now, why do we have washout is the follow-up question to this. It provides stability to the wing uh, when you get slow and near the stall. So again, you are stalling the inner part of the wing first before the outer part, so you've yeah. still got some form of control. So ultimately we're looking at the angle of attack of the root being a positive angle of attack, but at the tips it's a negative angle of attack. Yeah, so the wing tips are actually producing a downward force, right. and the root is producing an upward force. Okay. Yeah, so where's the centre of gravity? Is it this side, right. in the middle, or behind? It's in the middle. Well, no, if this is, oh. if this is lift, that's up, oh, okay. that's down. Yeah. So you said centre of gravity. Yeah. Wherever the weight is underneath it. <laughs> centre of gravity will always be before the centre of pressure or the centre of lift. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So you've got, it all the way through the textbooks, lift opposes weight. Yes. But why does a nose come down on an aircraft in a stall? because the centre of gravity is in front of the centre of lift. That's right, yeah, the weight is designed to be at the front so that when the aircraft stalls and loses lift, the nose comes down. Yeah, yeah therefore producing a, uh, changing the angle of attack and allowing airflow to go, yes, it doesn't want to sit up, yeah? Yeah. So, but the reality of that, in order to achieve it, they've got to move the centre of gravity forward of the centre of pressure. Yeah. Yes, so that's nose forward. but. As we know, if this is pulling down and that's pulling up, it wants to flatten that curve out, that couple. Yeah. So this is why you need a second force after the centre of pressure to balance it out. Right. So we have weight, lift, downforce. So Which is effectively they're acting like the tail on a conventional aircraft. Exactly like a tail on a conventional aircraft, yeah. So you've got the weight at the front, centre of pressure in the middle, and the wingtips aft. And, if you stand and that's why it's, it wouldn't work necessarily on a straight wing, it would only really yeah. work on... No, that's why we have a delta wing. So the next question working on washout is what are tip ones for? Do you know what tip ones are and what are they used for? Tip ones are those things there. Yep. Uh, and they stop the wing deflecting down because you've got that negative pressure. Okay. Speed uh, high speed or slow speed? Uh, High speed. High speed, well done. Not many people get that right. <laughs> yeah. If we low speed, you're already at a positive angle of attack, a very positive angle of attack. A flex wing being flexible uses, I mean, if you think of a wing in general, you, uh, a wing, if you're to break it into portions, uh, is um, three thirds or two thirds created from the top and one third created from the underside. This is when an aircraft stalls, you lose two thirds of lift uh, and, and therefore the aircraft is still essentially producing lift, but it's, it's just it's not enough. Yeah. So that's caused by the deflection. With this wing being flexible, at a slow speed, we can show you this on a, on a close up in a moment, but at a slow speed, the wing is getting a lot of deflection and that flexibility, if this is the washout rod, the flexibility in the wing allows that angle of attack to be maintained by a slow speed. At faster speeds, you're pulling the bar in mm -hmm. and therefore changing where the washout rods are, deflection is minimal. So should you reach a point of high speed, it's there to prevent a high speed stall. So it maintains the tip angle of attack yeah. at high speed. This is the tip wand or washout rod. And you can see that the in the hangar is under no flying loads. Uh, so the baton is resting on the, the washout rod. During flight, the airflow is hitting the underside of this. And as you would expect, it's being forced up. So next time you're flying, look out to your tip ones, because I know you're looking out, it's amazing, and you're looking out there all the time. <laughs> You'll see that there's quite a significant gap between the washout rods uh, and the trailing edge. Yeah. As you push the bar forwards, increasing the angle of attack, the airflow or deflection on the lower side of this wing increases and will change the angle of attack even more. As we pull the bar in, we're reducing 
the airflow on the underside and therefore you'll notice that the wingtip will drop. So these washout rods are there to maintain the angle of attack at high speed. Well, I hope you all found that really useful. Um, there's certainly some points that I've learned, uh, certainly more about how the wing works. On the flex wing side of it, I had a lot of knowledge from my, uh, my sailplane and GA world, um, but say so flex wings are certainly a different beast. Um, so I say thank you very much, Mark, for the uh, additional knowledge. Um, I hope I get asked some of those questions in my GST Grand Order. So uh, until the next time, everybody, fly safe. I wish to be so much better. I wish to be. I wish to be me